Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to our third installment of the CSI series. Um, our third case is called Daddy's Girl, and let's just get straight into it. I'm having great fun playing these, uh, this again. Um, I think I said it during the first case. Uh, these games were pretty major when I was growing Hello up. Again. Your first so. two cases indicate you have a real gift for forensics. But can you handle a genuinely grisly crime scene? I have one for you. First officer reports a call saying the apartment of a certain young woman is painted in blood. The apartment, and possibly the blood, belongs to a celebrity of sorts. Carrie Louise Canelli, the casino heiress. But there's no body, just plenty of blood. You'll have Sarah Seidel at your side. Sarah knows her way around even the bloodiest crime scene. Better get going, she'll meet you there. Okay. Crime scene. So these were huge when I was growing up, like I said, uh, during our first installment. And um, I hadn't actually, haven't actually been able to play these for a while, so I was thrilled when I was able to get it working again. Wow, this is a lot of blood. Be careful not to step in anything. I'll document most of this, but I'd like you to photo anything that looks out of place. I don't want to jump to any conclusions yet. I just want to take in the evidence. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be getting around anytime soon. Freezer is empty. Not even a frozen pizza or TV dinner. Like some old impressions on the pad. Let's see if you know how to process it in the field. Bit of magnetic powder. Try using a similar tool. Whoops. Huh. I know what you can do. You won't see a penny, Lucy. Lucy, huh? some stuff on it with a powdery stuff on some it some kind of waxy substance soap we have a print overlapping the door which means somebody left after the crime went down Nothing here that will help us. Who are you? Make that, who the hell are you? Las okay. Vegas Crime Lab. Calm down, sir, and answer the question. Sorry. I guess I didn't expect to see a, you know, chick playing cop. Hey. No offense. I'm Michael Dubois, Carrie's fiance. I hope you can tell me what the hell happened here. And where in God's name is she? We're gonna do our best to determine what happened here, Mr. Dubois, and I'll try not let being a chick impede that. I told you I didn't mean any offense. Wouldn't you be off your game if you showed up at your girlfriend's place and found it splattered like this? Uh, around midnight. I was expecting Carrie to be here. When I opened the door, I, I freaked out. Searched for her, nothing. And I called the cops, ASAP. Three months from tomorrow. I mean... Carrie was picking out her damn wedding dress just the other day. Just yesterday, in my apartment. We had lunch. I fixed it for her. Kind of an amateur chef. I'm not the sexist pig you think I am. God, what could have gone down here? Can you test this blood and see if it's Carrie's or something? Carrie? Are you kidding? Don't pay any attention to that crap in the tabloids. Carrie's a sweetheart. A living angel. And I hope to hell she still is. 
appointment? You think I make appointments with my own woman? I was just dropping by. I do that all the time. She likes it, me surprising her like that. Well, I've been here a hundred times, so I've touched things in this apartment a hundred times. But not tonight. I'm not a numbskull. Seeing all this blood, I knew something was wrong. Horribly wrong. I had to see if she was alive, so I, I, ch I checked the rooms quickly, and I, I think maybe I, you know, stepped in some of that blood. Almost what I had to. But after I checked, I called the cops and stayed right here until you came. No. If I had, I wouldn't be wasting time here talking to some female lab assistant and her lapdog. Hey! Jerk. I told you I was her fiancé. I had her key, she had my key. It doesn't mean we don't respect each other's privacy. I knocked before I let myself in. And I only came in because I knocked a long time and got kind of worried. Because if she was going out, I'd know about it. We're that close, you know? And then I saw this nightmare, and I called 911. Nah, she was just Carrie. If anything, she was in a better mood than usual. Sometimes she can be kind of quiet, even, uh, I don't mean this in a bad way, uh, mousy. But she was all smiles and laughs. I wish I didn't. Lucy Canelli is Carrie's little sister. Don't think I threw the B-word around loosely, but Lucy Canelli, she is one cold, calculating bitch. If you tell me she has something to do with this, don't expect me to act shocked. When there's a will, there's a way. An old man Canelli made Carrie, his older, more responsible daughter, the beneficiary of his major property, the Double Dip Casino. Even the old boy knows enough not to trust Lucy with that kind of responsibility. And brother was little sister pissed. Over at the Double Dip. She works there, sucking up to Daddy. Looks like the key to my apartment. I told you, we exchanged keys a long time ago. You never know when there's going to be an emergency or something. Case in point. This blood pooling is undisturbed. Strange. If a struggle happened with this much blood everywhere. So we're gonna do that. A lot of blood for one person to lose. We don't have a body, but I'm thinking we should have. Come on, Sarah, you're in the frame. This could be significant. The splash could represent where the first cut happened. Something big and heavy was dragged through here. Body, maybe. Somebody was making this window into a door. Her fleeing the crime scene? Plastic fragment. I have a guess what this is, but Grissom tells me not to do that. <laughs> yes. That's not right for this. There we go. A print. Bit of microsil. Do an impression. Drawer still locked, but this indentation. 
Probably means somebody jimmied it. What's up? Need ah. a hint? No. Could be. I was freaking out. Looking every place including the damn ceiling for her. Could have left footprints just about anywhere in here. Take them. Ah. Okay. Alright, so... There's blood on the shoe, but that doesn't really mean anything because he's just told us that he's probably stepped in it. Nice work. Rule me out for what? I told you before, I'm your guy where helping find Carrie is concerned. You want to give me a cup to fill? Or... That won't be necessary, Mr. Dubois. A swab will do just fine. <laughs> Over at the Gorman Towers, my apartment. Here's the address. And you people let me know the second you find anything about this horrible mess. I care about Carrie, you know. I really, truly care. Uh, okay, let's see. I kind of miss not being able to... You know, open the toolbox pretty much at will. This seems unnaturally far from the rest of the blood. Looks like there's something over here, but I can't quite make it out. Anything else for you? Wait, maybe there's like a fingerprint somewhere? I mean, come on, you, you can't tell me that there's nothing here. <sighs> okay. Well, I hear you don't have a body for me. Not yet, anyway. But maybe I can give you some insights based on some photos. 
I'd be happy to run some tox reports if you give me blood samples as well. Obviously, I can't give you a definitive answer, but the size is right to have been made by dragging a body across the floor. This small droplet spatter usually indicates a blow from a fist or other blunt object. At least half a gallon, could be more, and since it all came from one person, that person is almost certainly deceased. Ah, but there's one striking anomaly, Helen. It's highly unlikely a victim with that kind of wound could remain conscious long enough to spread so much blood around so many places in one apartment. One theory would be the killer held onto the victim, dragged her around the place, which would give us one very bloody perp. No problem. Check back later. No problem. Check back later. No problem. Check back later. Okay, so that's checking out all the talks reports. Interesting item. Not sure what to make of it. When looking for cause of death, I noticed a large portion of the blood was crystallized. Few things can cause this, including severe low temperatures. I wouldn't be surprised to find the body went through some form of freezing. Okay. Wait, hold on. If there is some sort of freezing, then maybe the... Maybe... What we're looking at is in the wrong place. trying to figure out all right let's go through to here go, let's go down to the lab real quick I'm gonna have to come back to that crime scene okay so let's start with this Wax, all right. Ski wax, actually. And you can make an impression of a key from this stuff. Perhaps somebody needed a spare key from Mr. Dupois's apartment. Blood on the wall. Okay, let's see here. Try that on the comparison microscope. <sighs> So far, where is that other? That's not good. No match to Dubois. This could mean a number of things. Worst case, she was also sexually attacked. Okay, so let's see if we can get a match. Not even close. Nope. Nope. Okay. So we have an unknown. That's just great. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Well, we need this. Okay, so we need like a something to compare that to.
desk. Oh, come on. There's no way that's... No, that's not even close to similar. Match to the charming fiancé. Not a surprise since he had his own key access, but this is surprising. Dubois had a record. Assault charge two years ago. Barroom incident? Sounds like he had a temper. Convicted, but suspended sentence due to first offense. So apparently they don't match. Okay. Well, that's Two in the floor friends. print match, meaning Mr. Dubois exited after the blood was on the floor. Yeah, but he already told us he stepped in the blood. Probably, so... I wonder if he's still... what I'm looking for here. Well, ow. You know the kind of pressures we get from the string pullers in this town. Right now, Jacob Canelli from his deathbed is providing a healthy dose. This kind of grief we don't need. So we need to find out what happened to his daughter fast. Now, what do you need? Once you've got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. We've done all we can with that evidence right now. Wait a minute. I think I might rem I think I remember something. I haven't played this in a long, long time, so I don't remember exactly what was around, but I vaguely... That's another blood song. If the victim was being attacked, this could be hers. If she fought back, this could be her attackers. <sighs> okay. Come in. Let's see if yeah, blood on the wall. Doc Robbins might be able to help with this. Let's see what if okay. You got it. Check back. 
Low and medium velocity spatter with no high velocity tends to rule out firearms. With a small amount of blood spatter in the photo, the use of a sharp implement is implied, not a bludgeon. With the blood coming out in large spurts everywhere, the possibility of a major artery being severed is strong. I've tried to help, but as Grissom would tell you, this is guesswork, informed though it may be. I can't determine the time of death from blood alone. When you have a body for me, I'm sure I'll be the second to know, after the murder. Reports are clean, no drugs indicated at all. If the body turns up, I'll make a note to check it for injection marks. Okay. Wait a minute. There was a... There aren't any. Okay, let's see if... Maybe, uh... Um... Oh, for Pete's sake, did a red flag come up on that ancient history piece of crap beef? Carrie and me, we were at this bar, and some asshole starts putting the make on. No problem. At first, I tell him move along, he moves along. Only when I go to the little boy's room, I come back, and there the dipstick is, hitting on Carrie full throttle. I just, you know how it is, just went off on him. It wasn't hurt, not that bad. Got yourself a little jealous streak, Mr. Dubois? Jealousy has nothing to do with it. I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy who stands up for his lady when some panting jackass gets in her face is all. And Carrie, she's a sweet, trusting soul. She could get taken advantage of by some jerk without even knowing it. Till I came along, her taste in men was lousy. Ha! Are you trying to bait me? How many times have I told you people we were frickin' engaged? What part of Carrie was out buying her wedding dress the other day, don't you understand? No offense, Mr. Dubois. We have to ask the tough questions in a case like this. Well, that's not a tough question. It's a stupid one. No way in hell would Carrie be with any other guy. We're... what do you call it? Frickin' soulmates. Yeah. Right. Tell you what, I'll throw you a bone. See those sunglasses over there? Nice glasses. Not quite right for you, though. Don't be silly. Those are for a female. They're Carrie's glasses. Left them here yesterday. Could we borrow them? I'm not gonna stand on ceremony and ask for a warrant or some crap. Let me make it clear, anything that'll help find Carrie, I'm up for. Whoa, what's that? Is that the right tool? That's not right for this. Nope. That was stupid. Huh. Sunscreen or something. I don't have anything else for you. <sighs> okay. So let's have a look at what this... Um... What this is. Liquid concealer. This is a cosmetic of choice among abused women. Green offsets the red and blue of a deep bruise. And this residue on the shades could mean they're concealing a shiner. Okay, so we've got a potentially abusive boyfriend. Delightful.
Let's see what little sister has to say. Miss Kennelly, we're with the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We understand you've been informed about the situation at your sister's apartment. Yes, I heard from your Captain Brass. I've been expecting you, and intend to help, of course, but could we move this along? I'm a busy woman, in charge of food services here, and that's a demanding and never-ending responsibility. Doesn't it speak for itself? Our father has been extremely ill, and Carrie has been staying away as if she might catch something. It's reprehensible of her. I love my sister, but her avoidance of responsibility, whether business or family, is a real bone of contention between us. Well, that Neanderthal is wrong for Carrie. He's a controlling jerk, although he's never learned to control his own temper. If this turns out to be something sinister, you may save yourself some trouble if you start with that monster. No, I'm not. Haven't I made it clear? We're oil and water, my sister and I. We are not close. And she wouldn't tell me her dress size, let alone share the details of her love life. Wait, actually, there is one thing that does come to mind. A few months ago, at the hospital, Carrie was making one of her rare visits to see how Dad is doing, and I was struck by how she and this male nurse were, well, almost flirting. We need to determine whether the blood at your sister's apartment belongs to her. As her sister, you'd be a partial match, of course. No problem. Just because we've had our problems doesn't mean that I don't love and care for my sister, you know? Not that I know of. Again, we're not as close as most, or anyway, many sisters. Still, she was in the tabloids, so a stalker would be possible. Of course, that fiancé of hers behaves like a stalker. Does that count? Uh, okay. Look, I told you, Carrie doesn't share intimate details with me. But she has terrible taste in men. Controlling jerks, one and all. She's been knocked around before. I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again. She's a serial victim. Did you ever see any signs of bruises recently? No. But my sister doesn't exactly go easy with the makeup. She's a pretty young woman, but insecure, and cosmetics are just another thing for her to hide behind. Within reason. The drawers of my desk contain key business documents that I don't care to have rifled through. Well, I can't say for sure it's Carrie, but I just discovered that someone was trying to use my Visa card on the day she disappeared. And they told me that their fraud protection agents had flagged a suspicious purchase. This has never happened before. It's gotta be Carrie. Hmm. That's interesting. Might be worth having Brass check into it. I don't have anything else to say to you. Here's an entry worthy of a raised eyebrow. Lucy had an appointment today with her sister at 7.30 p.m. I think it's the luminal. Yep, there we go. Was this used for opening letters? For bloodletting? We were planning to catch a late dinner, yes, but I got caught up in some business errands and got so far behind, I'm afraid you'll find I'm on your books for a speeding ticket at around 8 p.m. Frankly, I was so bent out of shape about it, I just headed back to the office, knowing Carrie had probably been waiting for me. She didn't pick up her cell phone. 
I'm afraid I just consider that more typically thoughtless, irresponsible behavior on her part. Oh, and that ticket is right here, if that'll help. Take a look at how sharp that stupid thing is. I should throw the damn thing out as many times as I've cut myself opening letters with it. But it was a gift from my father, and I'm sentimental that way. I don't have anything else to say to you. So, she doesn't want her drawers and such touched. That's fine. That's okay. Now we're going to go to the lab real quick. And we are going to just do some tests. Nah. And there, let's see. Blood from the letter opener. Looks like a match. Sure they match, but we don't know what either of these items actually are, so this doesn't really get us anywhere. We need to match one of these against something known. Oh, for goodness sake. These don't match. It's all about the little things, tiny differences between them. Be confident you've got a match before asking me for a confirmation. These don't match. It's all about the little oh. things. Time Good grief. Really? Okay. Sure they match, but we don't know what either of these items actually are, so this doesn't really get us anywhere. We need to match one of these against something known. Sure they match, but we don't know what either of these items actually are, so this doesn't really get us anywhere. We need to match one of these against something known. <sighs> okay. Now let's... These don't match. It's all about the little things, tiny differences between them. Be confident you've got a match before asking me for a confirmation. Where's the first... Blood on the floor. Okay. Blood from Michael's shoe. These don't match. Well, it's all about the, the little things, tiny differences between them. Be confident you've got a match before asking me for a confirmation. So this... These two DNA samples are close, but not quite the same. I don't even know how that's going to figure into everything. Okay, let's try put this in the other way around. Sure they match, but we don't know what either of these items actually are, so this doesn't really get us anywhere. Alright. We're gonna have to see if we can't do this a different way. Okay, let's have a, a look here.
Okay. Here's a stunner. Mr. Kennelly is leaving the double dip to Carrie, not Lucy, even though it's Lucy who's worked her tail off for him. This is a motive. <sighs> okay. I can't re haven't been able to do anything with the blood. I've got nothing new to report on the Vic. <laughs> there isn't one. a hair from our potential Vic. It has some scalp on it, which allows a DNA search. Without a victim, this is our best reference to determine if it's her blood. Really? Good grief. Blood definitely came from one person. up everything so that we've got yellow tags on all of blood samples we have a partial allele match between the blood at the crime scene and lucy's dna sample which is what you'd expect with siblings and since mr Canelli has no other children the blood at the scene belongs to carrie Canelli. Okay. Okay, so Lucy really did cut herself. Thank goodness for And that. how goes the case of the bloody apartment and the missing heiress? Lots of blood, few suspects, no body. Blood's carries all right, matched up with her sister. But if she's lost literally gallons of blood, she has to be dead, doesn't she? Well, as Sherlock Holmes once said, when you have excluded the impossible, Whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. But isn't Sherlock Holmes a fictional character? Probably. Okay, so... What's that? Oh wait, hold on. Come on now. Piece of plastic. It's a common brand of trash bag, so this means a bag was dragged out through that window, perhaps heavy enough to cause a snag. Was the victim taken out like trash? We've done all we can with that evidence right now. We've done all we can with that evidence right now. We've done all we can with that evidence right now. I don't think there are any fingerprints on this key. Or am I wrong? Try that on the comparison microscope. Ah. That's what we can do with it. Yeah, but we don't have anything to compare it to, so it doesn't really help much, does it? 
Um. All right. So let's go and talk to Jim. Well, her story is confirmed. Someone made an international call to a hotel in Aruba using Lucy Canelli's visa card. Visa flagged it as being outside of her normal spending pattern and notified her that it could be fraudulent. It could have a break here. If it was Carrie who made the charge locally, then she was still alive at 5.04 this evening, improving our timeline. Only take a second to access interdepartment records. And here it is. 8.12 p.m., 60 miles per hour in a residential zone. She was in one hell of a hurry to get someplace. This confirms she didn't meet her sister at 7.30. But that doesn't clear Lucy of murder. Not when we don't even have a time of death or a body. Doubtful. He's very sick and very rich. Those are hard hurdles to get over. And getting over them will take time. If we can crack this thing without going there, we should. Okay. That's fine. I'm still looking to see if I can't find something here that will... Now the blood is Carrie Canelli's. That's not really an issue. Maybe there's something in there that we need to get a hold of to have searched this thing properly. So let's go to the hospital quickly and see what we can find. Maybe somebody there can give us a few tips. Yes, I am. Now we know who I am, who are you? Vegas Crime Lab. We have a few questions. No. Of course I am. And I know that his daughter is Carrie Canelli. She's had her picture in the media enough. And I may have spoken to her in passing when she's come to see her father. Though the younger daughter, whose name I forget, she comes around more frequently. But when you ask if I know the young woman, I can say that a male nurse and a casino heiress do not normally run in the same circles. Ah. The younger sister whose name slipped your mind? Her name is Lucy, and according to her, the last time Carrie visited her father, you were more attentive to Carrie than to the patient. <laughs> well, that's an absurd assertion. Now that you mention it, and, and keep in mind how many patients I deal with in a day, much less a week or a month, Carrie Canelli was sort of friendly to me. Look, I really don't know her, but she did call me here at the hospital once. But it didn't go anywhere. We, uh, we live in different worlds. Missing? Why, no. No, I didn't. That's sad news. I mean, she seems sweet and unaffected, considering her background. But you should understand that Mr. Canelli's condition is worsened, and he was recently moved to another hospital where he could receive specialized treatment, so... I haven't seen either of those young women lately. Hey, I really didn't mean to be evasive. It's just, if I were accused of getting familiar with a patient's daughter, I could get in trouble here. I really, truly don't know that young woman, except in passing. Oy. Okay. Really? Well, it makes for humorous reading, if you're into irony. So much for hard work and dedication and family. 
I'm taking it in the nethers, so that Daddy can help Carrie grow up and settle down. You sound pretty upset about it. Wouldn't you be? But I'm not worried. Carrie hasn't ever shown any interest in the family business, and she'll come running to me for help when the time comes. I told you, she'll be in over her head and need me. Why should I hurt her? Or do you mean kill her? <laughs> right, I slashed my sister to ribbons in her apartment over this. Sure, that'll put me in solid with my father. Well, that note you left did sound like a threat. You won't see a penny? Look, I don't want this to get out. It's confidential. That time I said would come when she'd come running to me for help? Well, it already came. Carrie was ready to hand the casino over to me. You want it in writing? Carrie's writing? Sure, it's right here. Just because my sister and I aren't close doesn't mean I don't care about her. So sure, but get those back. I jog regularly, keeps me fit and sane, and that's my only pair. I There's blood on your shoes. These shoes appear to have been bleached. But was it to remove blood? I don't have anything else to say to you. Hi. Okay. Oh. The man wasn't what I was looking for. Print. Hey, look at that. Same brand and size, but the parcel lacks any individual marks. Which means you can't really tell which one's which. Go to, go to trace. Well, there are no traces of blood on these shoes, just a lot of bleach. These shoes were not the ones at the crime scene. Okay, so let's see, maybe she's got something else. So my footprint is at my sister's place. Why is that significant? It indicates you were at your sister's after the crime took place. Are you kidding? We're sisters, about the same height and build from our shoe size to our bra size. Carrie and I both had pairs of running shoes like that, as do a couple hundred other people in Vegas who took advantage of the same sale. Just because our daddy has dough doesn't mean we don't like a bargain. You two are trying my patience. I have work to do, if you'll excuse me. I don't have anything else to say to you. Okay, so... Maybe there's a pair of running shoes somewhere that you're supposed to find. Either that or I am seriously just reaching, trying to find something. <laughs> Let's go to the fiance real quick. What bruises? What the hell are you implying? We found traces of concealer makeup on her sunglasses. The kind that make bruises go away, on the surface. What, now it's suspicious that Carrie used makeup? She was in the public eye. She had to doll herself up like a movie star. Anyway, you know how women are. I mean, vain and stuff. Hey! That's hers, all right. Flowery and feminine. I could spot it across a room. Not a clue. But her judgment isn't always, uh, well, let's say she has no particular interest in the family fortune. The truth is, if she didn't have that fortune to dip into, she'd sing a different tune. 
For all the tabloid coverage she's got over these last couple years, Carrie's almost straight laced, sweet to a fault. What that queen bitch sister of hers might have on her, I could not imagine. <sighs> okay, so something. This is really starting to grind my gears. Mm. Because I can't find. I have nothing else to say. Sure thing. Looks like Mr. Portison was once picked up at a club where patrons walk the kinkier side. Erotic blood play. Ew. Sick as that sounds, Nurse Portison wasn't charged with anything. Yeah, it's right here. Plenty of calls to and from the hospital, but one was to Alex Portison's cell phone at 4.36 p.m. today, before that call to Visa. Well, well, well. We called that hotel, but they have no listings of Carrie calling or booking a room. Dead end. Damn. Okay. So somebody's been holding out. Which leads us to a few new questions, Mr. Porterson, starting with why did you lie to us about your relationship with Miss Kennelly? What relationship? Do, do you have a relationship with everybody you talk to on the phone? We've become friends, casually, is all. I didn't lie, I just played that down, because I knew you'd take it wrong, which you are. I've just, you know, been trying to lend her a sympathetic ear. She can use it, after the abuse that bastard boyfriend of hers dishes out. Well, no, not specifically, but abused women are always afraid to reveal what's going on. They cover up for the abuser. Hell, you know that better than I do. But I have eyes. Even if I hadn't had medical training, a bruise is a bruise. And all the makeup at all the cosmetic counters in town couldn't conceal those contusions. And her manner, my god, she was scared to death of that brute. Uh, must be a couple days ago? Of course, I talked to her on the phone just today. She was in a bad place where this, uh, I can barely stand to say, marriage to that monster is concerned. Listen, I, I couldn't be more pleased that you're looking after Carrie's welfare, but if you want my DNA, you'll need to jump through the proper legal hoops. I know firsthand about lab screwing up, and I'd want every I dotted and T crossed before we took that step. Sorry. Okay. Of course, the problem now is that you've got everybody pointing the finger at everybody else. Is this how you find out what happened to Carrie? Accuse the one who loves her of crap like this? This is slander, and this is America, and I... Who said I did? What, that stick-up-her-butt sister of hers? You believe that self-serving psycho? So the charges are unfounded. Listen, this is personal, so I'd appreciate it if... What was your name? Sarah? You're a nice-looking woman. Hey, I don't mean to step over any line here, but... Grown-ups know about these things. Is that right? I didn't mean any offense, it's just that that icicle sister of hers doesn't understand what happens behind a bedroom door between two people who love each other in a, you know, passionate kind of way. What, you never had a hickey, honey? That line you didn't mean to step over, Ouch. Mr. Dubois? You just did. Come on, I never hit Carrie out of anger. Hey, I like it a little rough, so does she. She's of age, she's with me of her own free will. I love her, okay? I would never hurt her in a hurtful way. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Oi. So now I'm basically just running up and down, up and down, up and down, just trying to find what I need to find. I don't have anything else to say to you. <sighs> Let's see. Does Brass have anything for me? Once you've got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. Nope. Maybe the 
nurse. Well, if you're back, it must be to thank me for pointing you toward that scumbag Dubois. Whatever happened to Carrie has to be that bastard's fault. Seems they were into rough sex, behind closed doors. Strictly consensual. And you're just going to take that abusive son of a bitch at his word? Mr. Porterson, you're the one we've caught in a lie. What makes you more a reliable source than Dubois? I have nothing else to say. I don't have anything else to say to you. Let's go to the crime scene real quick. I don't have anything else to say to you. I don't have anything else for you. Okay. I have nothing else to say. Does Robbins have something for me? I don't have anything for you right now. I must have messed up somewhere. I don't have anything else to say to you. Let's go to the lab real quick. I'm trying to think and I can't think. 
I must have messed up the order somewhere along the line. Search warrant. Questioning warrant. Okay. We don't even know if that's his or not. Uh, okay. There's locker, questioning warrant, okay. Something... There's something about this that's just rubbing me the wrong way. And I cannot for the life of me figure it out. I know I am missing something, I just don't know what it is. here that will help us. There is something here. <sighs> I was running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth the whole time, trying to find this stupid thing, and I couldn't find it. I don't have anything else to say to you. Maybe the fiance knows about the necklace. I don't have anything else for you. Really? What about the nurse? I have nothing else to say. Hey! Thank you. Starting to think Alex ought to cut back on the caffeine. Let's help ourselves to a cup of Joe. His cup. If we're lucky, we might be able to get prints and a DNA sample off of it. Yeah, we'll do that at the lab. Because I have a necklace now that I need to take a look at as well. I think you're supposed to... To put the necklace here? The necklace cut cleanly. From one side. Maybe during a knife attack. <sighs> That's not right for this. Oh, nope. That's the Nenhydrin, I think, is the one we want.
Funny, isn't it? How sometimes a DNA sample is just waiting for you in a public place. Okay, so here we go. We're finally starting to get somewhere. Let's start with that fingerprint. Do we have any unknown prints to compare it to? Nope. Well, that's a bit of a wash. But we do have a DNA sample that we can compare it to. And we're going to compare it to... It's not Michael, obviously. But let's compare it to Whoa. this. Looks like the male nurse has been exercising his bedside manner on Carrie's couch. Yikes. So if we click this... That then gives us a nice yellow tag. Uh, let's see. Once you've got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. So you got to talk to um, let's see I don't have anything else to say to you oh. okay I don't have anything else for you ah so you got to talk to him first Seems like you've been lending her more than a sympathetic ear. Okay, look. I, I know this looks bad, but if you just think about it one second, you'll understand. I mean, do you really think I want that anger management class reject Dubois, knowing that I'm seeing his intended? Who knows what that psychopath is capable of? Well, I, I did talk to her briefly on the phone, but I've been here at the hospital on shift since 8 this morning. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> this is not gonna go well. Say what? Did you have any prior knowledge of this? This isn't a topic I care to discuss with strangers. I'm out of here. Well, let's hope he's not on his way to see Alex Porterson and create a new crime scene for us. And much as I'd love to find Combe this place, Dubois being gone doesn't erase our need for a warrant. Maybe the sister. I don't doesn't. have anything else to say to you. Nope, apparently not. Okay. Once you've got enough evidence, I'll hit up a judge. <sighs> no, no, wait. Oh, stupid. What do you think happened? And hey, thanks for sharing my secrets with that ape, Dubois. I'm lucky he didn't kill me. In fact, he threatened as much, said, I'll kill your ass too. Almost a confession. I was alone in the break room when he caught up with me. I just, I just thought he'd get in my face and that would be the end of it. And when he knocked me down, I, I was stunned. He was gone before I could yell for help. I did call hospital security, though. I, I probably shouldn't have. Because having your relationship with a patient's daughter come out isn't so cool, is it? I haven't done anything inappropriate. Damn, you people find out I've been assaulted and climb all over my ass? I, why is it I pay taxes again? Fortunately, hospital security called the police and they caught up with that asshole in the parking lot. You should be able to check on that yourself. You still think I'm a liar or something. You've been lying since the day we started here. Or since minute one or whatever. Mr. Dubois is already a guest in lockup. 
He assaulted Nurse Porterson last night, as you probably already know. Shall we have a chat with the hot-tempered lad? I didn't attack him. If I'd attacked him, he'd know it, and so would you. I took it easy on that nerdy little creep, hitting on Carrie like that. As opposed to the way you hit on her? Are you saying you had no suspicion Carrie was seeing another guy? Well, yeah, I guess I did. You can always tell when your, you know, significant other's got something on their mind, but I wrote that off to pre-wedding jitters. How could I have imagined a toothpick like that twerp Porterson was my competition? Had to hurt. Who could blame you for getting mad? Killer? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. I admit I got a jealous streak, but I would never take it out on her. Give a creep like that Portison an ass-kicking, sure, but I, I wouldn't even kill a maggot like that, let alone the woman I love, and I do love her. But we don't know she's dead. We're not writing her off as dead, are we? Are you? You're not letting this go, are you? I was at home watching TV. Then I went over to her place at midnight. That's all there is to it. Anybody see you leave? Probably not. I use the stairwell. If I were in your shoes, I'd want an alibi. Okay, then. Right, now we're getting somewhere. Sheesh. Took long enough. You got enough evidence for a search. I'll hit up a judge. Nothing here that will help us. Nothing here that will help us. Not to talk trash about Mr. Dubois, but let's get to the lab and see what brand of bag he prefers. Hmm. We've got one child here with no family resemblance. This set of knives came from a high-end cutlery shop. But this other one? It's just a plain old slice co. Bloody surface, serrated edge. Could this be the weapon we've been searching for? Funny thing to file away, and it wasn't even under S. Nothing here that will help us. Nothing here that will help I'm us. Not trying to. It's just a ball.
should be, uh... Ah. Well, what do you know? Nope, not that. Is it this? That's not right for this. Oh, shut up. Let's see what we've got here. Ah! Wait a sec. Hold on. Let's see. No. No. Obviously not. We've got a match to a Nevada Gaming Commission card. Lucy Kennelly. Wonder what she was doing around Michael Dubois' apartment. Those two brag about hating each other. Matches Alex Porterson's hospital employee records. Not exactly a shock. Blood on the knife matches our big. I wonder if Dubois will try to write this off to rough sex play. He's not exactly very bright, is he? He's on his way to interrogation now. I know you think I'm some sort of mouth breather, but I'm actually a man of means and taste. I said I was an amateur chef. I wouldn't demean my kitchen with cheap tools like that. Hey. Maybe so, but that's where we found it. In your kitchen. Maybe it walked in of its own accord. By the way, lab tells us your fiancé's blood is all over it. Well, it may be her blood, but it's not my knife. I go in for the best. I can afford to spoil myself. And I do. Are you deaf or stupid or both? You shouldn't be looking at me. You should be asking yourself, who put that junk blade in my shiny kitchen? I can tell you one thing. Carrie has knives like that. That sister of hers gave them to her, which shows you how little that bitch really cares about her. Lucy probably just lifted them from the double dip. It's the kind of low-end cutlery their restaurant uses. Other than Carrie and me, I don't know. You'd have to check with the building manager. It's uh, janitor. Compelling stuff. I can call that judge with a clear conscience and get that search warrant. Just want to see if um, he's on his way to interrogation he now. Doesn't have anything 
else to say. I don't think so, but any, but you know. I don't have anything else for you. Nope. Okay. I don't have anything else to say to you. Wait a second. I forgot about something. Let's get that. There we go. Now we know what tool was used at Carrie's apartment to break open the drawer. We've done all we can with that evidence right now. So Dubois had the same brand of trash bags as the torn fragment we found at the crime scene. They are a common brand, so it's by no means proof. Michael and Carrie had access to these. Anyone else? I don't have anything else to say to you. Really? He's on his way to interrogation now. Someone hid it in the file folder. It was used to pry open a desk drawer in Carrie Canelli's apartment. Looking for something? A screwdriver in a file folder? Why don't you put it back and file it under screwed over by the cops? Why don't you try leveling with us? Or you could be screwing yourself, Mr. Dubois, right into death row. I came in, I saw that bloody mess. At that moment, for some stupid reason, I flashed onto this desk drawer Carrie had always kept locked from me. Never tell me what was in it. Drove me nuts thinking the woman I loved, the woman I was gonna marry, thought it was right keeping something from me. So I ran to my truck, grabbed my screwdriver to pry the drawer open. I was, I was looking for love letters or some such. Didn't really know, just had to know what was so damn secret. Only it was empty. I shut it. Felt very stupid about it, okay? And then I called the police. So after you got back to your apartment, you hid the screwdriver in a place you thought we wouldn't find it. You thought wrong. Okay. I don't have anything else to say to you. <sighs> What's that? Okay. Doesn't this key look like the one we found in Carrie's apartment? Well, this is definitely not Mr. Dubois's day. These records show profits from Mr. Dubois's bookmaking operation. Maybe this is the leverage Lucy Kennelly was talking about. I don't have anything else to say to you. Fairly wide gauge needles. I wonder what she needs these for. Skylar Progressive Hospital. 
That's where her dad was. the lab. Go all the way down. Evidence. Let's check it with this. Look at our sweet innocent errors have been putting in her veins. Hey, Grissom asked me to check up on you guys. Crack this sucker yet? Who was it that said, curious and curious air? Probably Grissom, quoting Lewis Carroll. What's the latest curiosity? Well, seems Carrie has this thing for needles and the people who have access to them. Into drugs? Initial report from the bloodbath in her apartment was negative. We're about to run this new sample by Doc Robbins. If Tox turns up clean here too, then you need to ask yourself, if our Vic wasn't shooting up, what were those needles for? Okay, what else? Do we have anything else? There's more to be done with that item before we can process it. Okay, so that means we've got probably got fingerprints or something. Maybe. turned green for a minute, I need to... Hmm. Ah, no, wait, 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 come back. this stupid thing. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Ah, there we go. For a second I thought I was going nuts. Nice work. looks suspiciously familiar. Corson's prints. Not too surprising if this box did come from that hospital.
key from Lucy's office. Key from the victim's apartment. Yes, an exact match to the key to Michael Dubois' apartment. So there was a third person with access. Okay then. Let's go and see what the captain's got to say. Let's first talk to He's the on his way to again. interrogation now. See what he's got to say, then we'll talk to the sister. What? Listen, is th th this is supposed to be a, a missing persons deal or a, a, a murder. What does this have to... How to Found my records, huh? Thought I'd misplaced them or maybe Carrie had taken them. Is that the real reason you decided to break into her desk before calling the police? Okay, it is. But so what? That doesn't mean I killed her, beat her bloody or anything. I just saw all that red everywhere and knew you people would give the place the treatment. And if those records were there, better I found them than you. But I didn't find them, and you did. Where? Lucy's office? What the? Why the? I have no idea. Unless that bitch stole them for some sick reason. Bookmaking outside the system is frowned on even in a gambling town like Vegas. Especially in a gambling town like Vegas. You need to keep better track of your records. She had a key to my... Damn it! Is there anything that conniving little monster won't do? How should I know how she got the key? Stole it from her sister, maybe. I sure as hell didn't give it to her. Like to wring her scrawny little neck. Not the smartest thing to say in front of a homicide detective. Oh, just popped out. I have this tendency to, you know, let off steam. Wouldn't you be wound a little tight if you'd had the day I had? This morning I'd have said that was crazy, the idea she'd do drugs. Now, what do I know? Up is down, down is up, black is white, white is sharp frickin' truce. Oi. Alright, now we let's talk to... Yep, that hypodermic needle ought to inject some confidence in a judge. Let's go. So you found those. Need any further convincing that this guy is a total pawn scum? I took them from his apartment, yes, because I wanted something to really show my father what sort of lowlife his precious little girl was getting ready to marry. A blessed union that stood to taint our family and our business with guilt by association. I'd have thought you wanted to protect your sister from a lowlife like Dubois. Carrie was past listening to reason, and I don't remember when she ever listened to me. Meek though she seems, she makes her own choices. My responsibility is the business my father worked so hard to build. Stopped in one day to deliver a copy of my father's will to Carrie, only she wasn't in. I have a spare key for her apartment for emergencies. Whatever squabbles we might have, we're still family. Anyway, I went in and stumbled across that spare key to Dubois' apartment. Thinking fast, I went out to my car and got some ski wax out of the trunk, made an impression, and had a key made that very afternoon. So you helped yourself to a good hard look around his apartment. The guy is slime, and you know it, and I know it. I knew damn well I'd find something on him. Frankly, I expected to find drugs, but what I did find works just as well to demonstrate what an amoral loser Carrie hooked up with. Plant a... No, no! I didn't go there to plant anything. I just looked for evidence of his low-life character. So you had a key, and you knew Carrie was getting everything in your father's will. Perfect opportunity to get rid of Sis and claim your rightful share of the family fortune, especially with that scumbag fiancé just waiting to be fit for a frame. Listen carefully. Carrie and I have had our problems. I don't like her, okay? But she's my sister, and I love her. I would sooner kill myself than harm her. And anyway, why would I? She already signed the casino over to me. 
I found those needles at Carrie's place, when I was dropping off the will, remember? They disturbed me, obviously. If she got herself involved in drugs, I'd have to... I don't know what. Certainly, I intended to confront her about it. Is that why you left that note? Well, I was pretty angry. I figured with all the opportunities Carrie had heaped upon her in her short life, to get involved with drugs... And that's what I assumed. Though I suppose it could have been an illness or something. Anyway, I was bent out of shape, out of concern for her. I don't have anything else to say to you. Okay, so... Consider it done. Check back for the results. I have clean, no drugs indicated at all. Then what was Carrie using needles for? Good question. Wait a minute. I'm not sure what else I can do with this box. We've done all we can with that evidence right now. We've done all we can with that evidence right now. We've done all we can with that evidence right now. We've done all we can with that evidence right now. So maybe the fiancé's got something to say. He's on his way to interrogation now. I don't have anything else for you. Nope, apparently not. Okay, so... Porterson? How should I know? She could have taken them from the hospital on one of her visits to her father, couldn't she? Your fingerprints are on the box. I work at the hospital. Could be a coincidence. I wouldn't put it past her, getting in my locker and taking them from there. Keeping needles in your locker, that's standard for a nurse? Hell, I keep all kinds of things in my locker. Not storing, more like dropping stuff off when I'm on my way to here or coming from there, you know. We're talking employee locker? Here at the hospital? I, uh, suppose we are. No big deal, right? Don't you have a locker at work? Okay. Well, he's just given me enough for a warrant, so... Nice work. Time to breathe some fresh air into that locker of his and see what he's hiding. I'll call a judge. here. Look familiar? Yep. Sure does. Why the blazes would you... Uh, something tells me I'm not going to like the answer to that. Tomato juice. Okay. 
Hmm. Inside smells like blood. Sneakers, does it match? Definitely Carrie Canelli. But what did Alex do with the body? Blood from the clothing. It's the same. And the blood from the jug. This may have started out as a tomato juice jug, but it wound up filled with another kind of red. No surprise here. This is the bag that left a torn piece on Carrie's windowsill. Okay, so... Maybe our victim was trying to escape out the window. We've done all we can with that evidence right now. There's more to be done with that item before we can process it. Imagine there's a print here somewhere. Now I'm going to find it. That's the problem. If there is a fingerprint on here somewhere, it's going to be a nightmare to find it. Unless... can't see where this thing is. It has to be either on the it has to be on the label somewhere because there's no other way. Okay, I'll I'm gonna come back to that because there's something something's bugging me. I have nothing else to say. Wait a sec. 
do I have? Blood from the knife. What's that? That's from the sneakers. That's from the jug. Okay, I don't know like what... Like Grissom says, blood tells. And all the telling stems from Alex Cordeson's locker. Let's talk to him. I'm sure you could come up with some really interesting lies for us, Alex. But let's try the truth. It should be interesting enough. They're Carrie's clothes, all right. Carrie's blood. It's all Carrie's. Where is Carrie Canelli? If you and Carrie ever really were friends, cut her family a break. They deserve the truth. Motel, across town. You left her body in a motel room? It wouldn't have taken us long before we found her. The smell alone. You don't get it. You're just not that smart. I'll work real hard at it, Alex. Educate me. She's not dead. Carrie Canelli is not dead. Not dead? All that blood. You mean you haven't put it all together yet? I mean, you found the jug and the needles, right? I didn't kill Carrie. Carrie killed Carrie. Are you prepping an insanity plea? You have to understand. Carrie was born with a silver spoon, but a tarnished one. She's pretty, and her father is famous, and that made her and everything she did tabloid fodder. She had this thing for bad boys, and she took more beatings than a Persian carpet. Her life in a fishbowl really, really got to her. She wanted a simpler life, but her daddy wanted her to take over the casino, a business Carrie hated. Why Mr. Kennelly refused to consider Lucy, who for all her faults had worked hard for him, I couldn't say. Maybe Lucy wanted it a little too much. And one day... Carrie woke up and she had a dying daddy waiting to burden her with more responsibility than she could ever face. Not to mention a sister who hated her guts and an upcoming marriage that promised to make her the battered wife poster girl. Lucy, her father, Dubois, they all underestimated her. Behind those blue eyes and that placid personality, Carrie is a clever girl. And she knew she couldn't just leave or else Dubois and her father would come looking for her. She figured she only had one way out to fake her own death. It would require some minor plastic surgery and a change of hair color, and a lot of planning and a hell of a lot of nerve. But she relished the thought of putting one over on all these control freaks just ruining her life. So she met you, a male nurse, with medical knowledge and a sympathetic style, and the two of you saved her blood. It must have taken months. Ms. Seidel, you're a clever young woman yourself. We drew out only a bit at a time. We stored it in the juice jug you found in the freezer. She slowly thawed it, and then she splashed her blood around everywhere, creating a crime scene that would inevitably lead to her being declared dead. Then she brought you her bloody clothes to destroy them in the hospital incinerator. Yes, but then I screwed up, got busy at work, not daring to attract undue attention, and haven't had a chance to get those clothes to the incinerator. Particularly not with you people underfoot so much. Then you beat me to them. Why do I think it was your idea to use the knife to frame Dubois? Well, you're correct about that, Captain. That wasn't my carry at all. Took some real convincing. But I couldn't risk him coming after us, not with his temper. And anyway, I convinced her that her murder would be more real if someone paid for it. And that abusing bastard deserved it. I think she felt good about knowing he would never beat up on a woman again. So what was the plan? After you fooled the world into accepting Carrie's death? We're in love, Captain. Neither one of us care a damn about the money. Just, just each other. She'd pulled enough out of her accounts to give us a start. We're heading... Well, we were heading to Aruba to make a new life together. Well, you won't need money while you'll be going, and you won't be together. You see, just because Dubois is a woman-beating asshole, that doesn't make it cool to frame him for murder. What motel, and what room, Alex? That was kind of a complicated waste of time, wasn't it?
You investigated every possible angle on this case. Doesn't happen often, but I'm very impressed. Ha. Okay, so that was our third case. This is this is just getting more and more interesting. <laughs> definitely worth a revisit. I found this case to be kind of a little over complicated. I mean, why not just, oh, I don't know, tell your dad you don't want the business? <laughs> and, um, I mean, who's gonna believe, I don't know who would believe a crime scene like that so so quickly that you could fool people with the the tech to actually say oh yeah no that didn't happen you know oh well anyway thanks for tuning in guys i will see you for the next case <laughs>